Today I'm going to be giving you guys 10 editing secrets that I wish I knew when I first started. Make sure you guys stay to the very last one because it is an absolute banger and it will help you speed up your edits a lot. Now before we hop into this guys, this video is sponsored by my website. If you guys are looking for a quick and easy way to go step up your visuals, look no further than tinytapes.ca guys. Everything on that website is created by me specifically for you guys to get those crazy effects with quicker turnaround times for your artists. We got everything on there ranging from drag and drop 3D looks to crazy color grades you guys can use in your videos and even transitions that I use on all of my videos. Make sure you guys go check out some of the packs we have on there because I guarantee you guys there's something there for you. Sitting at number 10, we have moving your folders to quick access. So we're here on my computer here, guys. If we go into my two terabyte SSD, I have my effects folder. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm editing a music video, I like to use my effects folder all the time. So quick and easy way to do this is going to the folder and dragging it on the bar here. So once we have this here, you're not gonna have to go looking for your effects folder every single time you wanna use an effect. You can just quickly open up your file explorer, go over to effects, and boom, they're all there. Whatever you use the most on your computer, I highly recommend you guys move them on the side here so you're not spending forever looking for them. All right, guys, so moving on to number nine, I highly recommend this tip if you find yourself editing and turning on and off clips all the time. So usually what most people do is they use the eyedropper here to turn off their clips, and as you can see, they're disappearing. But what most people don't know is that it actually doesn't stop your computer from rendering it as if it was there. So if I turn all these off here and I play it through, my computer's still gonna use all of its power as if they were still there and on. The only way you can really get around this is right clicking going down to enable and turning it off but that's kind of annoying so what i did here is i set my enable key to e so when i press e on my keyboard they just turn off just like that and pressing e again will turn them back on so if you guys want to do this we're going to go up to edit go down to keyboard shortcuts and then we're going to search enable and then right here where it says enable you can see i have my shortcut set to e if you were to set to something else click on it hit delete click on it again you hit this empty box and then hit e on your keyboard and then make sure you hit okay now once you guys have that set i'm telling you guys your workflow will be insane in premiere pro all right guys moving on to number eight this one is super important if you guys find yourself using Premiere Pro and After Effects, that is using Dynamic Link. So if you find yourself using Premiere and After Effects quite a bit, going back and forth in the workflows, when you're in Premiere and you're done cutting your video or whatever, right click on your clip and go up to here and replace with After Effects Composition and hit OK. Once you do that, it's going to open up After Effects and put your clip inside of After Effects. Once After Effects is open, it's going to make you save the file. I'm just going to call it Tut as tutorial, so make sure you save it in your project. And then boom, as I open this up here, guys, you can see the entire clip is open here in After Effects. And what I I recommend doing once you guys add your effects to it you can go back into premiere and it's going to be this purple color here now i wouldn't recommend just leaving this as is once you guys add all your effects to the clip render the clip in after effects and drag and drop it back into premiere pro don't just leave this on as a dynamic link because if you guys have a bunch of these it's going to get super laggy and you're going to have a ton of rendering issues just from past experiences so just disable that and drag and drop your clip in. All right, guys, so moving on to number seven here, this one is absolute sauce. If your guys' clips are 60 FPS and above, most people know that you can go right click, go to speed and duration and make your clips slow-mo. Now, as you can see, the clip is slow motion there. I'm just gonna delete the audio, right? Looks super cool. What a lot of people don't know is, let's say I have slow motion on this clip here. If you wanna use warp stabilizer on a clip, which basically stabilizes the clip and does makes it not as shaky, you can't use warp stabilizer and speed on the same clip. Now, to work around this, if you guys go to your clip, right click and nest it, hit okay inside of the nest is your clip at 50 percent speed and then the nested clip you can then apply a warp stabilizer on it and it's going to stabilize the footage now like i said this isn't the greatest footage to use warp stabilizer on it's gonna look kind of wonky but as you guys can see there it looks pretty good so you have that smooth motion from something like this so I highly recommend doing this for your clips, especially if you're trying to slow-mo them and then use warp stabilizer on them. It makes them look super clean. All right, guys, so number six is exporting multiple files from Photoshop at the exact same time. I use Photoshop for a lot of my picture overlay effects and for all of my titles. So now let's say, for example, here, we have a bunch of titles. So let's say we were just working on a Cash Dommy video and you guys end up with all of these different clips. Instead of turning just one of them on, going to export, exporting it and doing all that, what you guys can actually do is turn all of them on, go up to File, Export, Layers to Files, Make sure you turn the file type to a PNG and turn on transparency. Go to where you want them to save. Let's go to our desktop. We're going to hit OK. And you guys can render out all of these files individually and it will do it super fast for you guys. Just so you don't have to render them one by one. This works super well and it's really fast. I recommend doing this so you don't have to export them one by one. All right, guys, moving on to number five. If you find yourself dragging a lot of images and using a lot of adjustment layers in Premiere Pro, this one's for you. We're going to go up to our project here. We're going to right click. We're going to hit new item and click on an adjustment layer. Hit OK. And then when we drag that in, as you 
you guys can see, my adjustment layer is exactly eight frames. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My fast motion effects V2 pack that I use all the time for my transitions. Most of the transitions that it tells you to put on are eight frames. So the preset adjustment layer when you have Premiere Pro, when you drag and drop it in, it's 20 frames. So it's really annoying every single time to drag in an adjustment layer, crop it down from 20 to eight frames, and then put your effect on it. Now to get around this and have your adjustment layers and photos that you drag and drop into Premiere Pro preset to a certain length, we're gonna go up to edit preferences timeline. And then right here where it says still image default duration, you can change that from seconds to frames and make it as long as you want. So if you want it 10 frames, eight frames, go ahead, change that. And then you're gonna have to reset your Premiere for it to come into effect. But I highly recommend doing this if you guys find yourself using adjustment layers, dragging and dropping photos in and they're way too long and you always have to crop them down. Moving on to number four, we have saving your export settings, guys. I highly recommend doing this, especially if you're exporting a lot of videos. So let's say we go to export a video like we have here. You're obviously you're gonna name your video. I'm gonna call this tough for tutorial. And then as you can see, I have a bunch of presets down here. I have ProRes music video export, high quality music video export, IG export. If you guys wanna have your certain exports, you can go down and change the settings here. So I have a video on the best export settings. Let's say you have your certain export settings you do every time. You're just gonna go ahead, click all those. And instead of going and clicking them every single time and change them to what you want, once you have your settings set, you're gonna click the three dots right here. You're gonna go over to save preset and you can name this whatever you want. So let's call this tut and then you're going to hit OK. So once you name it and hit OK, you can go into preset here and your preset will be here every single time. So every single time I want to render, let's say I want to do my ProRes music video export. I just hit that and boom, all of my settings are set here. So I highly recommend you guys do this to speed up your renders. All right, guys, now number three is super, super important. And if you guys aren't doing this already, I'm going to blow your mind right now. So if you guys do not know what this is, this is an SSD. Now, the difference between something like this and something like this is that this has a disk that spins. This is a hard drive. On both of these devices, you can store files, but this one has a disk that spins, and this one is just a piece of computer technology. Now, this, the SSD, is 32 times faster than the hard drive. I highly recommend you guys edit all of your footage on an SSD. You won't have any lag whatsoever in Premiere Pro compared to if you edit on this. You're going to be lagging all the time, man. It's not going to be a good time. You're not going to be able to cut as fast. So I highly recommend you guys go out and buy yourselves an SSD. I recommend the Samsung T5s. They are the best. You can get sizes ranging from 250 gigabytes all the way to 4 terabytes, which is 4,000 gigabytes for you guys that don't know. Once again, Samsung T5. If I catch you guys lacking editing off of a hard drive, I'm coming for you, bro. So moving on to number two, we have auto synchronize. Now I do this all the time in Premiere, and this definitely works in all other video editing softwares as well. Now, if you guys do not know how to auto synchronize, I'm literally going to change your life if you edit music videos or anything sort of like that. So in Premiere Pro here, guys, as you can see, we have the original song at the bottom here, and then you're going to have your performance scenes here. Now, if you're that person who goes through, finds a part in the song, and then tries to sync their video to the song by dragging and trying to line it up you're going to spend hours doing this and i'm going to blow your mind right now so what you can do instead is you can turn all these clips on highlight all of them right click go over to synchronize make sure you have mix down set and just like that guys premiere automatically synchronized all these audio clips to the video so now we can right click unlink and delete all these audio files bring this track up crop all these over bring it to the beginning fix these and boom you have your music video clips lined up to the song just like that and just a few seconds. All right, and now moving on to number one, the very last tip I told you guys to stay all the way to the very end for. Give yourselves a pat on the back, guys. You definitely deserve this one. I'm gonna give it to you guys. It is the sauce for editing. I don't know about you guys, but I shoot in uncompressed footage. So my footage is very, very large. And sometimes if I have a bunch of programs like After Effects, Premiere, Photoshop, all these programs running at the exact same time, and especially if I have a bunch of clips open up in my timeline, my computer's gonna have a hard time running this all this at once. Now I have a 3090 with 120 gigabytes of ram so you're gonna think oh you probably shouldn't have a problem with all this but trust me i have a problem with it sometimes the sauce here is using proxies if you guys do not know what proxies are i'll put you on right now so let's say we have this video clip right here it says playing it through in full high quality now you can go down here and change it to one fourth which will make it a little bit less quality but it's still going to be very hard on your computer to be honest this is a 4k piece of footage so if you want to proxy your footage you're going to go up into project we're going to find our footage here i have all these clips selected we're going to go up to proxy and create proxies for some reason guys it's telling me that Adobe Media Coder is not installed when I literally have it installed and it's opening right here below, as you guys can see. So I'm just gonna kind of explain to you guys what you do next. So 
imagine this doesn't happen to you, you have Adobe Media Coder installed. What you're gonna do is there's gonna be a couple of options. It's gonna tell you low res proxy. You're gonna hit okay and select that. Then it's gonna open Adobe Media Encoder and all your video clips that you selected are gonna start rendering on the side. So it's basically gonna take all your clips you wanna turn into proxies. It's gonna render them out all over again and turn them into lower resolution video clips. So now it's open here. All your clips are gonna open up here and they're gonna start rendering. Now make sure you guys select the option in a folder beside your original footage. So what that's going to do is going to take all your footage and it's going to re-render it at super low resolution. It's still going to look decent, but at low resolution so your computer can actually handle it. It'll probably make them 720p or whatever. Now, once all of them are rendered and set, all you have to do down here is click this little plus icon and you're going to have this toggle proxies thing that's in here. We're just going to drag it down into this area, hit OK, and then you can turn this on and boom, it's literally just going to toggle the proxies. So when you're cutting your footage, I recommend having this on to make it easier on your computer. When you're color grading, just tap it and turn it off so you have the actual footage or when you're adding effects, the exact same thing, make sure you have it off. If you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more videos just like this, I have two banger videos right here that I recommend you guys go check out. Definitely help you guys learn and step up your editing process. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.